There's an IRC chat, an SDEV on FNet. I think there's one girl that hangs out there, so um, usually they're just talking to her. <laughs> if you go in and you are, in fact, female, or you tell them you're female, you'll probably learn a lot about Nintendo development, as well as other things, quickly. <laughs> but again, that's one thing you might want to try. Uh, the wiki is amazing, though. It doesn't matter what sex you are, you'll find all the information you need on the wiki, nestdevwiki.org. I would check that out. Um, Shipmusic.org and apiccollective.com are two websites that um, I always spam with software that I write because they're for people that are in the chip music scene. And a lot of people like this software to use for VJing in the chip scene. So there's threads um, in the NES software and software sections of each of these sites where people are asking questions. I'm explaining things, I'm explaining things again, and then I'm explaining things again and saying, did you look at the README? And then they look at the README. So that's a common, common, you'll see that all the time. Um, Programming the 6502, this is an amazing book by Rodney Zacks. It came out in the early 80s. Um, there's a site, I believe it's called uh, Bomb Jack. And um, he has an archive of... Um, Bomb Jack. Yeah, I guess this is it. Yeah, I hope this is it at the top. Yeah, books. Oh man, this site is so awesome. I could just browse, we could, this could have been my talk, just going to the site and showing things. Um, assembly language, I have to show you the cover of this Roddy Zax book, because it's like, almost like, it's amazing, hold on. Where, where is it? Uh, but this is a great book, you can buy it on Amazon for really cheap, um, but all of these books are actually really good about assembly language, and of course it doesn't have the title here, so you have to just scroll for it. There's like a flying microchip on the cover, <laughs> and the insides are all x-rayed, damn it. Alright, well it's here, I promise. The Roddy Zax book, you can just look for the title. But again, all these are about machine language for the Commodore, which is the exact same type of assembly language that you're going to use for the NES, or for the Atari 2600, or early Apple computers. So learning the uh, assembly language um, could get you a job 25 years ago, um, <laughs> if you want to learn. Uh, but right now, it could definitely get you into hacking into a lot of older systems. All right, well, it's on here somewhere. I like this. I hope this was printed in Jamaica. I like this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's great. All right. Um, anyway, the bomb tech site is awesome. These are all PDFs. The Rodney Zacks book is unbelievable. Even if you've never programmed before, it starts out like it starts out thinking you don't know anything in like 1982 terms, which is very different than not knowing anything nowadays. Um, I do, you'll, and that's a strange thing to say, but you'll understand when you start reading it. And they take for granted you want to do shit. Where nowadays, books take for granted you don't want to do anything. So um, it's great. It really takes you through you know, math, binary math, and different types of uh, uh, really low-level computing concepts. And uh, 6502.org, extremely, it's as sterile as it sounds. Um, but it does have lookups for opcodes and other information about programming for the NES. I have a website that we were just on before. I have, uh, you can reach me on Twitter as well, um, talk, start following me, I talk about software, my cats, <laughs> that's about it. Um, <laughs> this is uh, the Facebook page, this is like, I think, well, it's not as awkward anymore showing this, but I think it used to be like a fan page, but now you can just click likes, you can like me instead of just being a fan of me, um, which is much better from my, uh, from my point of view. And um, you can email me as well, don at nocarrier.com, so please take a look at the software if it interests you. Um, and uh, I, I, I try to make it as easy to edit as possible to give you results very quickly. And if you do like doing live performance and you want something else um, besides just um, uh, you know, uh, some, some modern computing uh, applications for glitching, uh, this is probably a good uh, tool to use. And Vade, uh, who's just speaking, is so working on something called Open EMU. Can you yeah. talk about that a little? Because this, or do you want to? Well, that, want me to say what I know about it? You can just start shaking your head at the line. <laughs> sure. All right, so um, OpenEMU is something that um, they and a couple other people developed, and it works with Quartz Composer, and it allows you to run emulators like Nestopia in Quartz Composer <coughs> and um, do things to them with Quartz Composer. I'm trying to be vague here, so don't screw up. And uh, one thing you can do is load, um, load GlitchNest into it. So this is like layers of meta glitching at, at work here in Quartz Composer, but um, if you like that environment, if you're interested in what uh, Dave was just talking about, take a look at OpenEMU, you can load GlitchNest in there. I think it comes, at least it used to, sh to come with the, uh, execute, I mean, the ROM of GlitchNest as well. So again, you can use this in emulators. You can use it on hardware um, and get in touch if you need anything. Thank you very much. Woo!